Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about the Washington Commanders hosting Ohio State receiver Chris Olave and Alabama wide receiver John Mechie for draft meetings. We'll talk about that and what it means and if those two are fits for Washington in this year's draft. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content on the road to 7,500 subscribers. So please help me get there. Also hit that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. And go ahead and follow the Twitter first link in the description. Now, let's get right into the video. Also guys, real quick, I made a second channel. I'll be posting some NFL content on here. It's called Pedro NFL. I'll leave it, the link in the description. Go ahead and subscribe to it. It would mean a ton. Now, let's get right into the video. Okay, so let me read this right here from Albert Breer. He says, The Commanders are hosting Ohio State wide receiver Chris Olave on Thursday in Ashburn per source. Olave is very close with star wide receiver Terry McLaurin. Could be in play when Washington picks 11th overall. Also, Alabama wide receiver John Mechie will be in Ashburn on Friday to meet with Washington. So we already know, we already knew that Washington was going to use one of those top 30 visits on Chris Olave. We just didn't know when the visit would, you know, be. But now we know that they will also be meeting with John Mechie, and I believe that'll be a top 30 visit as well. If you don't know what a top 30 visit is, each team has 30 visits basically that they can have in the draft where these players will visit their facility. There are some exceptions with local talent. So, you know, ha ha you know, hosting someone for a top 30 visit definitely shows some interest because you only have 30 of those and maybe they're doing John Mechie because, you know, he they're interested in him, but they also want to get more of a medical on him because he did tear his ACL, but it's just something to consider. But th these do show interest in players. It shows that Washington is at least somewhat interested in both of these players. Okay, so I've talked a lot about Chris Olave over the last week or so, so we're, we're still going to talk about him, but let's start off with wide receiver John Mechie. Give you guys a little bit of a background on John Mechie because we are showing some interest in him, and I believe I will, in a week or so, put a video about all the players that we're meeting so you guys can get a better sense of all that, but John Mechie is about six foot. 195 pounds, had a great year this past year for Alabama, had a good 2020 as well. So 2019, four catches, 23 yards. You have to keep in mind, I mean, he's playing behind Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell, I mean, a lot, you know, Henry Ruggs also, a lot of these top and elite receivers that were drafted in the first round in 2020 still had 916 yards, averaged 16.7 yards per catch and had six touchdowns even when playing behind Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. And then this past year, he kind of, you know, he exploded even more. 96 catches, 1,142 yards, 12 yards per catch, and 8 touchdowns. So the yards per catch were really the only thing that went down and, you know, really not much of a running threat. One catch for 8 yards. You know, the one thing, one of the biggest, not knocks on him, but he did tear his ACL at the end of the season, I believe it was an SEC championship, but I, I'm not completely sure. So he might not be ready for the start of the season, but he definitely could because, you know, he toured a few weeks before Jamison Williams. So he definitely could be ready for training camp. So I don't think it's going to, you know, knock him down too much, but it definitely will knock him down some and teams are going to have to feel comfortable with the ACL injury. But I mean, his production is very, very good, over a thousand yards in this Alabama offense him and Jameson Williams went in you know went off this year for Alabama so let's look at some background on him and some other things so hometown is Canada I don't think he was born there but he grew up there about six foot 185 pounds and again did not run at the combine and do any of those drills because he was injured you guys can see some of the background right here so let's look at some of his strengths and some of his weaknesses so again I haven't watched film on him but this is what Lance Zerline has to say um, he has experience running a pro caliber route tree attacks press leverage and defeats it 
and you know he and one thing i forgot to say he projects more as a slot receiver but he can play on the outside and other positions as well so if you do have him in the slot then you're gonna have to push curtis samuel more likely than not to the outside and i like i think curtis samuel obviously can play on the outside and in the slot but i think he is better used in the slot and drafting John Mechie might force you to play Curtis Samuel more on the outside than in the slot. And I don't know if that would be his best, you know, where he's best suited. Um, some other things, snaps off route breaks at crisp angles, um, good downfield focus and ball tracking, improved his contested catch success in 2021. And he has great yards after catch. If you, I mean, again, didn't watch any film, but you watch the highlights, he has great yards after catch ability so many you know short passes where he turns it into a 20 30 40 yard gain some of the weaknesses suffered an acl tear in december so that is a big deal but again he's young he's 21 ish years old so he should recover faster than someone like let's say logan thomas who's 30 a little bit bigger who you know towards acl i believe in november who might he who i think will be ready for the start of the season but this guy john mechie will likely recover a little bit quicker than him a uh, lot uh, looks smaller than uh, his listed size average release speed into the route lacks a lacks explosiveness to separate out of turns and stems pre-break head turn has become a route tell lacks size and length to outreach corners down the field and one thing i saw from him is that he really wasn't the great at those you know deep balls he was much better in the short to intermediate range not really that much of a knock but he's not going to add that you know he, he can add those big plays because he can turn a 5 10 yard pass into a 20 30 yard game but he's not going to catch those deep balls that often like some of these other guys in this year's draft but i definitely like john mechie and i don't know if i like him in washington i definitely wouldn't be upset if we drafted him because he is a very good talent and would help us right away if he is healthy that is the big key though and i talked about this a lot with jameson williams like i don't know if washington is going to take a lot of risks with these you know guys that have had injuries because they don't have an athletic trainer right now i don't know if that would be the smartest thing to take a risk on a guy with you know an injury history when you don't have an athletic trainer and you, you see this right here diagnosed with a slightly enlarged heart in high school it doesn't look like it was you know that big of a deal because he was able to play in high school and college but again that is something you probably want your head trainer to look at and they don't have one right now so that is something to keep in mind he's probably going to be a second round guy somewhere in the second round 47 might be a little bit too early for him but in that like 40 to 60 ish range at the you know lowest he'll probably go is like the third round and we don't have a third round pick unless we trade back in the first round so john mechie not a bad prospect not going to be a first rounder though likely will be a second so if washington wants to get him i think he will be there at 47 and he could definitely help this wide receiving court out a lot and then you would have him terry and curtis samuel and that would be a solid receiving core if john mechie hits he doesn't have a huge huge upside but he still can be a good receiver in this league for sure so now let's go into chris olave so i'll keep it a little bit shorter with chris olave because i've talked about him a lot in the last couple weeks but we all know chris olave played with terry mclaurin at ohio state so you have that connection right there they're really close uh, you saw in the tweet uh, from Albert Breer, and I'll show you guys this video about what Chris Olave had to say about Terry McLaurin at the Combine, so I'll play it right here for you guys. He's uh, probably my favorite, one of my favorite teammates at Ohio State. When I first came in, uh, lower recruited guy, lower rated guy, but he took me under his wing right away. He was like a big brother to me at Ohio State my freshman year, and even, even to now, uh, we still keep in touch. Uh, I call him every now and then, we text every other day, so... Uh, Terry is a huge role model to me. And, uh, I see him, his career taking off, and uh, I can't wish uh, anything but the best to him. So these guys obviously have a good connection, so that's always an added bonus. They have familiarity with each other, and you know Terry can tell Ron Rivera and these guys some things that they might not know otherwise. So quick, you know, background in Chris Olave. You know, I've talked about him a ton, so I won't go into it too much. But six foot one, 190 pounds, and played played at Ohio State for four seasons. So was there with Terry for at least a year or two, I believe two years. 
Um, had 13 touchdowns this past year, 936 yards, and had pretty good production. You know, his you know last three years, not elite production, not over a thousand yards, but still pretty good production. And you have to think he's playing with other very good receivers out there this past season. Garrett Wilson, you have Jackson Smith and Jibba as well, who's probably going to be the number one receiver next year. So it's hard to get 1,200, 1,300 yards when there's other guys that are you know going to get a thousand yards. But I really like Chris Olave. He's going to project as an outside receiver. Got really good speed. A very, very good route runner. One of the best, if not the best, route runner in this class. And it's funny, his NFL comparison is Terry McLaurin. So that, I mean, it would be funny if we did draft him. And I wouldn't be upset with it at all. The dream scenario I you know, saw JP Finley tweeted out today is if we could trade back and get Chris Olave at 20. Not sure if he's going to be there. You know, the Saints did trade up a little bit, I believe, to 15. With the Eagles, they need a receiver. And, you know, they already got Michael Thomas went to Ohio, to Ohio State. So they might be interested in drafting him. But if he's there at 20 and we trade back, that would be a really good spot for him because you get a, you know, possibly another number one receiver and you get some assets back from that Carson Wentz trade. 11, though, is a little bit too rich for me. Would I absolutely hate it? No, but I definitely wouldn't be ecstatic about it because I don't think it's amazing value, okay? But I do definitely like him. I mean, he's a great route runner. We can look through some of his strengths and weaknesses right here. Great route runner, top end speed, creates vertical opportunities, um, glider with ability to route coverage up, burst for separation, all three levels. And yeah, you can use him in the short passing game, intermediate passing game, and deep passing game. They used him a lot at Ohio State in a variety of different ways. I've watched a few, I think four games of his film, and that definitely pops out there. Um, adjust speeds to ball flight. Oh, and another, you know, he's great with those toe drags and kind of those sideline catches. A lot of those sideline and toe drag, you know, catches he makes all the time. And I mean, I guess another added bonus, blocked two punts during career and has gunner talent. I mean, if we're drafting him in the first round, that's not going to happen. We're not going to be um, having him be a gunner, but that is um, good to know. Some of the weaknesses, scheme provide a lot of room for free play. Lack for desired play strength could become a concern. Room for more manipulation as a route salesman. Average hand strength to finish the catch and not a great blocker and average in run after catch mode. So that is it right there for Chris Olave. Some of the other things right here, six foot about 187 pounds. So I like Chris Olave. I definitely do. I don't know about him at 11. Wouldn't hate it. Wouldn't love it. But I would love if we could get assets back like a second and a third and get Chris Olave at 20. That would be very, very good in my opinion. Not sure if he's going to be there. I think he's going to go in that 13 to 22 range. So that's where I think he's going to go. And yeah, we'll see. So let me know what you guys think about these two prospects. Would you draft Chris Olave, Olave at 11 or you know, would you even draft him at 20 if we traded back with the Steelers? And what are your thoughts on John Mechie? So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, that, hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace, guys.